might have been seen as problematic by uh, by some of the students, maybe even threatening? Um, I don't. I don't see how someone would rationally think it was threatening. Um, I, I could see how it might challenge their existing ideas, but for me, that's, that's the spirit of the university, is challenging ideas that you already have. And I don't know who this came from. I would be interested to see the original complaint or complaints, because like, I don't really have any context like, as to what exactly their problem was. Sorry, can I, um, sorry to interrupt, but can I just ask Lindsay to maybe just provide us with a full thing? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Nathan, I don't, yeah. I, I just like to hear the whole, like, your, what, 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 what took place. So if you would just give us the whole story, yeah. and, then, and sure. then, and then, sorry, but I, yeah. I just feel that because I'm mm -hmm. just sitting in and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, we, we have to teach about grammar. And in the Pearson book, there was a section about pronouns and using like gendered language. So I wanted to make it more engaging. So what I did is we were talking about um, in papers using they as, as like a singular. And then we were also talking about like his and hers and like how to construct sentences with that. And then to contextualize it, I brought up like a, a YouTube debate. So a debate with both sides, Jordan Peterson's sides and this this fellow named Nicholas Matt, who's also a prophet U of T. Okay. And they Could you, do you know have the name of the video? Okay. Um it was from the agenda with Steve Pakin. Okay. It was like a YouTube debate. It was one hour long, but I showed about five minutes. Okay. Um and then some I mean the students were were very interested, I could tell. They're, all of their eyes were on the screen. And after when we had a debate, there were people of all opinions. And like from from what I could see. It was a very friendly debate. Um, obviously, this person who had an issue did not express it to me. They just went straight to whoever. I don't. I don't really know what happened. So, okay, um, just for some additional context. So, uh, you come. You came from U of T. Is that right? No. No, you oh, from SFU. Uh, oh, from SFU. Okay, so you weren't um, like one of Jordan Peterson's students. No. Or like that. Um, so, just to give you some context about Jordan Peterson is. He is a, a figure that's um, basically highly involved with the with the alt right. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, yes, uh, the uh, the website Rebel Media, which is a, an alt right website, has uh, been involved in raising multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars um, for uh, his research. It's uh, he as as. Uh, a, week, a week and a half ago, uh, he gave a lecture in which he identified student protesters, um, like by posting their social media accounts, so that people would uh, bully and, and threaten them online. He, he lectures about um, basically like critiquing uh, feminism, critiquing. Um, trans rights. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar. Like, white I, supremacy. I, I follow like, him. Not critiquing. Okay, so, but so the thing is, can you shield people from those ideas? Am I supposed to comfort them and um, make sure that they are insulated away from this? Like, is that what the point of this is? Because to me, that is so against what a university is about. Mm -hmm. So against it. I was not taking sides. I was presenting both arguments. Okay. So the thing is about this is. If you're presenting something like this, it uh, you have to think about the kind of teaching climate that you're creating, and this is actually these arguments are counter to the Canadian um, Human Rights Code. Uh, ever since, and I know that you talked about um, C16. Ever since this passed, it is discriminatory to be targeting someone um, due to their gender identity or gender expression. So bringing something like that up in class, not critically, and I understand that you're trying to like... It was critical. I, I introduced it critically. How so? Like I, as in, like I said, I, it was in the spirit of debate. Okay, in the spirit of the debate is slightly different than being like, okay, this is, this is a, like a problematic idea that we want to, make, we want to unpack. But that's but, taking sides. Yes. Like it's taking sides for me to be like, oh, look at this guy. Like, everything that comes out of his mouth is BS, but we're going to watch anyway. Okay. So, I understand the position that you're coming from and your positionality, but the reality is that it has created a, a, a toxic climate for some of the students. It, you know, it's, how many? it's great that... Who? <laughs> like, how many? Okay. One? May I, may I speak? 
I'm just, I have is, no I have no concept of of like how many people complained like what their complaint was you haven't showed me the, the complaint yes I, I understand that this is upsetting but there's also confidential confident confidentiality matters the number of people is respect. confidential yes okay. it is one or multiple students who've come forward saying that this is something that they were concerned about and that it made them uncomfortable if this is for example a trans student this is basically debating whether or not a trans student should have rights within one of their classes. Um, and that's not something that is really acceptable in the context of the kind of learning environment that we're trying to create. It would be a, the equivalent of debating whether or not uh, you know, a student of color should have rights or, or should be allowed to, to be married. Uh, do you see where, like, how this is not this is not something like that's intellectually neutral that is kind of up for debate. This, I mean, this is the Charter of Rights and But freedoms. it is up for debate. But, I mean, you're perfectly welcome to your own opinions, mm -hmm. but when you're bringing it into the context of the classroom, that can become problematic. And that can become something that is, that creates an unsafe learning environment for students. But when they leave the university, they're going to be exposed to these ideas. So I don't see how I'm doing a disservice to the class by exposing them to ideas that are really out there. And I'm sorry I'm crying. I'm stressed out because this to me is so wrong. It's so wrong. Can I mention the yeah. gender violence, um, gendered and sexual violence policy? Yeah, please. So under that, um, it does, gendered violence doesn't just include sexual violence, but it also includes um, targeting folks based on gender. Um, so that includes transphobia, biphobia, homophobia, all those sorts of things are protected under the policy. And so those are things that Laurie has um, upheld as values as well as the Ontario Human Rights Code. Um, and so those are things that we're responsible for um, uh, not um, impacting our students in that way and not um, not spreading transphobia. Okay, so the, the, what I have a problem with is I didn't target anybody. Who did I target? Trans folks. How? By telling them ideas that are really out there? By telling them that? By telling them? Really? It's, it's not just telling them in legitimizing this as a valid perspective as this is another valid perspective. In a university, all perspectives are valid. That's not necessarily true, Lindsay. Well, this this is something that's being debated in current society, and I don't feel the need to shield people from what's going on in society. Like, okay. to, to imagine that this is happening in university, it's just bad. Okay, so bad. just to give you a context, 